One of the greatest opportunities for energy savings in existing homes is air sealing and insulating attics. Since homes uh, are like natural chimneys, warm air is more buoyant than cold air, so it rises, and so we have lots of air leaks in attics. Unfortunately, when most people think about retrofitting attics, they only think about adding insulation, and that's only part of the equation. We have lots of air loss because that warm, more buoyant air escapes out of the home and uh, adds a lot to the energy cost. So being able to air seal an attic is just as important as the insulation. Here we see that we have lots of penetrations to our attic air barrier pressure boundary. So all of these recessed light fixtures, the smoke detectors, is what keeps the conditioned air in our house and separates us from the unconditioned attic air. So we need to make sure that that plane is airtight, which means all of these recessed light fixtures should be airtight rated, or we should construct boxes around them to make sure that there is no air leakage through them. It's also important to note that we also get heat gain from attics. As you can see in this thermographic image, that even though the light fixture is off, we can see quite a bit of heat re-radiating around that fixture. Also, you can see examples of heat gain as a result of improper insulation. So we're not just thinking about heat loss in the winter, we also get heat gain in the summer. Now, a big area of where we see problems in attics is not just around light fixtures and you know, smoke detectors, there's also any penetrations, and these penetrations are called attic bypasses. They can be from ductwork, plumbing, all these things have to be sealed. And particular attention needs to be played around the combustion appliances, uh, because if we have combustion appliances get warm, it's a different process for air sealing. So one of our big leaks that we need to seal in attics is the diffuse leak where interior walls interrupt our ceiling drywall. So our air barrier is the ceiling drywall. It's interrupted by this interior wall, and we typically don't see that the ceiling drywall seals perfectly airtight to the double top plate. So all along every interior wall, we need to seal that small crack where the drywall meets the top plate. The rest of the leakage path is air leaking past the top plate and coming out where the electrical penetrations are or under the drywall where it doesn't seal to the bottom plate and coming out at the, at the bottom where the sill plate is. It's hard to imagine, but uh, homes uh, obviously can be under positive negative pressure, so it's hard to imagine how much air could really get around this drywall because we figure that the drywall sits flat up against these plates, but in reality it doesn't. There's a lot of uh, air movement that can easily get between those gaps and cracks between the drywall and the lower plate, and we can get air movement up the wall or we can actually get air movement down the wall depending upon whether a home's under positive negative pressure. So when we think about air sealing attics, what we're after is all the attic bypasses, in other words, anywhere that we have have any penetrations or any holes where air from inside the home can exfiltrate around. That's electrical boxes, light fixtures, plumbing penetrations, heating and cooling ducts, the plates that Rick just talked about. All these areas need to be diligently sealed. So when we start our air sealing activities in the attic, we take a blower door reading, we seal whatever penetrations we can find, and then we take another blower door reading so we can quantify the magnitude of improvement. If we aren't making progress, we look harder for where the actual leaks are. We also use smoke pencils and sometimes smoke generators to actually identify the leakage pass. But again, our overall goal is to get this plane, the ceiling plane, airtight that separates our conditioned house air from the attic. A whole other category that we need to pay attention to in the house attic assembly are attic knee walls and skylight shafts. Those are often more problematic because it's a vertical wall, but there's no covering on the attic side. So for those, for those areas, we're often put an air intrusion barrier on the attic side to improve the overall performance of those areas. All in all, attics are a great opportunity, one of the most cost-effective opportunities to save energy in the home and make the home more comfortable. As long as we do our air sealing first and then install the insulation.